Malikos is finally here in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, the latest conquest unit to enter into the game. And the big question is, is this guy gonna be a big deal? I saw a few comments linger around that made me laugh calling him Malikos. But I feel very confident telling you guys, this is gonna be the next big defensive team in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Since we can't even use his Omicrons right now, all this is non-Omicron gameplay with the Seer Junda, Malikos, and maybe even Star killer omicrons this is gonna feel like a darth malgus level team in grand arena i believe time will tell but if you remember when darth malgus came out there was a lot of concern before going into grand arena that darth malgus was lackluster and as we've come to know malgus was almost as galactic legend as you can be before being a galactic legend and just like i said in the malgus video wait till we get the grand arena turn on the omicrons i'm saying it again now i'm not disappointed and i think we're gonna have some crazy metas because of this guy let's hop in and show you some initial gameplay and tell you what the king of triple b is thinking about malikos although we don't have omicron gameplay to show right now we'll definitely show some as the grand arena starts up this week mods are something we can't control and it's going to be incredibly important for malikos make sure you reach out to people modding is one of the most important part of the game it's the majority of the character's power and if you're needing some help make sure you hit up people he'll give you modding advice and remod your roster from top to bottom making sure you're pushing your roster to the very best and he even gave us some modding recommendations for those that have malikos or maybe down the road assuming you have relic seven you want to get this guy somewhere around 270 speed plus 10,000 offense get a speed on the arrow critical damage on the triangle he's gonna hit really darn hard as we're gonna see offense on the cross and the circle mod let's make it health because there's a lot of health gains on malikos and the seer junda team to be the very best malikos can be he's got to be modded the very best so overall the point of malikos is to bolster the unaligned forest users his kit is very specified and if you start breaking up full unaligned forest user teams or you're not using an unaligned forest user lead he kind of turns off a variety of his stuff throughout his kit there might be an opportunity to maybe use a star killer again some things will be turned off because it's not a full unaligned forest user team but it could be something that we just can't test out yet until we get into grand arena with the omicrons turned on there might be a slight chance you can use him with lord vader i mean technically you could use him with lord vader because he's an unaligned forest user but again some things will be turned off because Lord Vader's not an unaligned force user. Initial impression before Omicrons, I'm not really crazy about Malikos of Warrior. The Seer Junior team is going to be a lot more interesting. It's kind of like why you don't see Darth Malikos as Sith Eternal. Sure, you can, but why would you? And of course, there's other miscellaneous things he could technically work with, but just maybe doesn't make 100% sense, especially if we're going to be sacrificing a god tier ish defensive team. You could use a Supreme Leader Kyle Ren and Rita since unaligned forces, but I'm not expecting too much of that. So I want to focus more since we're mostly looking at pre Omicron gameplay and we could spec about the future of the omicrons i want to focus more on the seer junda team we quickly realized well, yeah this omicron is a huge deal for seer junda and seer junda is one of the best non-legendary defensive teams prior to malikos's entrance where as of right now where it stands you pretty much need almost a top ticket item to take her out with that ideal team being seer cal ahsoka tana fulcrum baby kylo and kylo run on mass we're seeing that you know if you want consistent wins you got to be throwing general anakin skywalker treya savage star killers Reva even could have some struggles up against that team and pretty much beyond that you got things that aren't very consistent you know he maybe got a bad batch possibility boss bounty hunters possibility but those are already very weak counters maybe Jedi Knight Revan so right there prior to Malikos and Malikos is gonna fit into that baby Kylo slot and he's vastly superior over baby Kylo I'm expecting this to maybe be only contained to you might need a gas you might need a Treya prior to the Omicron with our initial testing basically the only things that were able to counter we had Darth Malgus Jedi Knight Revan and some cute things that probably just won't happen like we made Radis work once we made Emphis Ness kind of finish the job with Dash Rendar but again looking at the data when we look at the data a lot of things that I did make work like Radis sort of Dash Rendar Command Luke Skywalker we can just completely omit that because they don't even really work in Grand Arena prior to Malico so realistically the only things that might work still are Jedi Knight Revan General Anakin Skywalker Darth Malgus and maybe Treya. I actually lost with my Treya up against this team, but Treya doesn't have her Omicron, and then Omicron.
on Trey is a vastly different team. So I don't want to shut up the possibility that Trey could still work. So realistically, those are only a handful of non-galactic legend teams that are very expensive teams. And we don't even know 100% yet. Are they going to work inside of Grand Arena? Malikos, what he's bringing to this unaligned forest use team is pretty much tons and tons and tons of damage that they didn't have before. Now, of course, Sir Juna had like a mini insta-kill ability, like aerial advantage, or did a lot of heavy lifting. Ahsoka Tana Fulcrum could do some decent damage. But beyond that, there wasn't much else. Malikos is bringing a massive, powerful AoE ability called Die Well. And even before the Omicrons are turned on, he was able to easily hit 100,000 plus damage. And keep in mind, once you have that Omicron on him, he'll deal an additional true damage to all enemies. And then he could stack up his critical damage in offense, assuming the leader is an unaligned force user. And his unique ability is going to give him more opportunities for Edge of Madness, jack up that damage even more. We're going up from here. Sir Juno lead not being turned on. You're missing out on the extra 30% max health, the 30% max protection, immune to ability blocking days you're gonna get 75 percent protection up on a team which is based off max health with malikos's max health boost that he gets of 100 percent he's gonna be fairly durable a lot more durable than what we already saw she's granting stacking offense for the seer junda team in a variety of ways and tons of health recovery and tons of foresight plus on top of this malikos is missing out on the opportunity to create that savior like mechanic so the first time another dark side or light side online forces or ally would be reduced to one percent health malikos gives him 100% health, 100% protection, damage really, tons of uh, offensive ramping things, and a bonus turn. And then anytime an enemy with a less than 100% turn is gaining bonus turn, he's getting a stack of Edge of Madness, which greatly improves his uh, offensive capabilities. And the enemy is going to be taking additional true damage. In the Grand Arena setting, with the Omicron, you're going to get a critical hit immunity at the very start of the battle, making potentially the General Anakin Skywalker battle more difficult, because what does he do? Apply critical hits. Well, if he can't apply critical hits, this might really reduce the possibility of General Anakin Skywalker being a powerhouse and then he gets that 100% max health and 50% mastery plus then he gets extra bonus turns sort of like general anakin skywalker when he does an ability he immediately uses his basic ability afterwards and then he gets protection up again based off max health and then the opportunity to maybe assisting off of his allies when they're using special abilities so it's pretty nuts how solid this team is already looking in grand arena no omicrons and it's only going to get more annoying and more deadly to deal with inside of a grand arena setting another thing to note that really kind of makes this team scary that I noticed that damage immunity is incredibly nasty to deal with. Bad Batch is pretty much even though they're already a little struggling inside of Grand Arena against the Sierra Junda team, the Bad Batch don't even count it anymore. The second Echo does his buff the spell, which then applies the healing immunity, boom, damage immunity right away, which is pretty gnarly. And of course you can't stun the team now. So who knows, would the Star Killer team work anymore? Because you know Palpty would generally just try to stun the whole team. You can't stun them anymore. And when they do get stunned, they'll get 30% health of protection. And again, also looking at that star killer counter that we currently have, if you're getting bonus Terminator and getting true damage to yourself, how's that gonna affect Marjade and Palpatine? Will that be an issue? We also saw some cool moments, for example, Beskar Manda would try to use his whistling birds, but the order of operation seems to be healing immunity applied, damage immunity kicks in, and it ignores all the following damage. We also saw some Boba Fett's execute. We would launch a rocket thinking, oh, I wanna take advantage of all those buffs on a Seer Judah team. Uh-uh, doesn't work. So Boba Fett's execute kicks in, the healing immunity applies, Damage immunity kicks in and stops all the damage Boba Fett would apply. So it's pretty powerful how this damage immunity works. It's actually coded in a way that makes it very useful. So overall, the best team that we can at least see and understand right now prior to Omicrons is for sure going to be what we kind of expect. It's Seer Junda, Malakos, Kylo Ren on Mass, which is a very deadly character. Do not underestimate him on the Seer Junda team with the pre-taunt, mega durable with stuns and all the other fun stuff and kind of hard to kill. And then Cal and Ahsoka Tana Fulcrum we're seeing that this is going to be quite an interesting team to figure out how to beat inside a grand arena however i do want to leave that door open that we might see some really crazy omicron heavy teams of like seer junda malico star killer maybe barris and savage however that's a lot of stuff being put into one team and the fact that malico's let's say you're trying to gun down star killer the second you gun down star killer he's going to get saved by malico's and get back to 100 percent 100 protection it sounds like on paper star killer 
killer should be able to hit his ultimate ability because you can't blitz him down right away so for me personally i'm really excited to see how great this guy is going to be in grand arena again we only can go up from the base level that sir june is already showing inside of grand arena he is a huge upgrade over kylo ren the baby kylo ren and i would be surprised if it turns out to be a flop very much like darth malagas i think the, the, the issue really kind of comes into play more of a concern about the game rather than the character it's a bit unfortunate you grind months and months and months in conquest to unlock these new characters some people years if you have to go through proving grounds and then you can't even use them in squad arena you can use data crowns in squad arena, but not omicrons and you only get nine grand arenas a month so you're only using this guy one third of the time at best possibly in a given month in his ideal situation it would be great if we could see the omicron so we could see the full potential but unfortunately that's not the way the game is for whatever reason all i'm hoping is that i'm reassuring people i don't think he's meh i'm actually very excited about him i remember last year when Ma malgus came out i said i think outside of grand arena malgus is a four out of five level four a four out of five star character and then in grand arena i said i think it's be a five out of five star character and that turned out to be the case yeah jedi knight cal Kestis is here and now malgus is kind of not as crazy on defense if you see cal Kestis. what if malgus is gonna be the best counter to, to this terran malikos thing that would make me happy because i can't put malgus on defense really anymore if someone has jedi knight cal Kestis. there's a malikos that's probably gonna be a huge use for malgus assuming he can work against him so it kind of works out i also want to kind of bring this up here i think this character might also be very helpful inside a territory battle since the middle planets let you bring light side unaligned forces and dark side online force users this could be a pretty decent team as well inside a territory battle so keep that in mind i think take advantage of your Sierra june and other teams that you could create it with him and even in territory wars i could see this being a useful character like darth malgus he doesn't have territory war omicrons but he's very good in territory wars because outside of grand arena still he stops imperial troopers from running over the team you can't really do any cheap bounty hunter counters like in the past so even malgus not being a territory war specific character still found very solid uses in territory wars i'm feeling like that's gonna be the same thing if before the omicron of course there might be some territory war omicrons that might bring up some new counters you don't see in squad arena or grand arena having sir june and malikos possibly make a lot of teams complicated there's gonna be use out of this guy so take it from me as someone that calls it what it is the second i see it, like when trench came out i was like ah, i'm not too sure about this i don't have that concern if his main focus is to make lord vader better okay maybe i'd be a bit underwhelmed but i don't think that was a really i actually don't really know yet why they brought the malikos thing into the equation of lord vader when they first brought him up again i don't want to shut down the possibility maybe he'll do something that makes lord vader better in regard i'm sure the anti-revive would be nice but ju again just like you don't want to put malgus with sith eternal because you're missing out on supercharging your sith empire team i can't imagine malikos finding his primary home being a lord vader lineup especially when he misses out on so much possibility with the sir junda online force team of course if you don't have sir junda maybe you could throw him with the star killer maybe a lord vader and there are some other maybe interesting things perimeter Kyle Ren and Reva but again I'm not quite seeing what he's gonna do that's gonna benefit those teams that they couldn't do before real quick small note about Omicron order uh, first off this is gonna be probably one of the more Omicron heavy type of characters it feels like you're gonna want all three of them you know somebody can pass on you know like with Reva Malgus you only need maybe one or two this seems like you're really gonna want all three but if I had to pick an order of operation Echo the Fallen Order seems to be the first one I would go with it creates the savior mechanic where when you're trying to blitz out Malikos or Star Killer, or whatever the case might be he saves them right away and it applies the true damage when enemies are getting bonus turn meter which is going to probably shut down a lot of things that are currently working in squad arena and shut it down in grand arena second omicron i would go with the strength is power starts them off with edge of edge of madness gives all online forces a critical hit immunity which is probably what's going to be really making the gas counter complicated which can't be dispelled by the way 100 max health for malikos 50 percent mastery to juice up his damage even more the ability to turn to general anakin skywalker with multi-attack abilities he gets protection up every time he attacks on a turn and he's going to be assisting off the unaligned force users when they use special abilities lastly die whelp is what i would recommend again I, generally you know like with like ben you only need one and you're good to go you're missing out on stuff if you don't get this he's going to get the additional true damage on top of the already massive damage he applies he gets the buff immunity healing immunity which can't be resisted and the cr stacking critical damage in offense if the leader is an unaligned force user pretty powerful stuff so probably gonna be one of the more omicron expensive characters uh, it seems like it might be hard to skip out on some of these so we're gonna be logging into grand arena very shortly to really put this guy through the test i think in the non-galactic legend realm he's gonna be very scary maybe some possibilities of using him to beat some galactic legends not sure if i can promise that much right now he's gonna be somewhere maybe not commander tano mall but i think he's gonna be dark malgus level and people come to love
love and appreciate what Darth Malgus did on defense the past year. Comment down below on all your beautiful thoughts and be sure to subscribe so you're not missing a thing. And please, please, please always remember that it's great to be in the Empire today. Well, the sun never sets. We dominate. We're stronger.